and hello again welcome to our next video on open form so we have been uh, post-processing right I'm trying to plot some graphs <coughs> and uh, we have successfully used paraview using this plot over line function filter whatever you call it to plot a velocity profile of the magnitude of velocity uh, um, of course there's more you can do you can plot pressure you can plot the k epsilon depending on your turbulence you can even plot temperature profile if you're doing some kind of heat transfer modeling the concept is more or less the same now of course um, if you want to take this data out and plot it in let's say excel uh, well you can't just uh, always use pair of you right you will probably want to take this out and then you want to overlay the graphs on top of one another so that you can have a very good uh, idea of what these uh, profiles are like when you overlay them. Um, so, where is this found? Well, um, do take note of this uh, tutorial file called the Solid Displacement Form. Okay, uh, it's this function called Solid Displacement Form, and they say it's a stress analysis of a plate with a hole. So. This is what the file is like. So OpenFORM doesn't just simulate fluids. Anything with uh, finite volume analysis, such as heat transfer, it can even be stress analysis, materials, yeah, you name it, um, it can be found here. So this is a stress analysis on a material that's undergoing some deformation or strain, which is uh, pretty common in uh, solid mechanics or uh, material science studies. So um, these are the usual stuff. Uh, so um, there will be there is one part where they have this uh, post processing, and they will actually extract out the data, and then you plot it out something like this. All these dots here are the data. So we are not interested in the rest of the code. We are just wanting to see how you know the tutorial actually gives us an, gives us an idea of how to plot out the files. So we are in the tutorials folder. You should know how to get there. You just uh, if you are starting from the uh, anywhere, in fact, so you just go from tutorials and then you press LS or just L, both are fine. And you go to stress analysis and so, uh, CD solid displacement form. Okay, so you go to this file called plate hole and then I'll clear the output. Now, list out of all the files here. Now, of course, uh, this is uh, me having run all the files. So uh, I'm not going to waste time, uh, you know, putting an all run in because I already have an all run. All right. So um, now we can see there. Yeah. So normally what you have is just an all clean, all run, a constant and a system. So after, after the all run is run, you have this post processing file. You have four log files. All right. So the block mesh is what you're familiar with. Solid displacement form is, you know, the solver for this uh, stress analysis, similar to what IcoFoam is to, is a solver for laminar flow. And then you have these two post-processing post logs. One says sigma, the other says single graph. Okay, so let's take a look at the all run file and see what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, so remember these two files, uh, these two lines, they are pretty, you know, um, standard. Uh, you will already know what this is. You have to copy and paste this in order to start running the functions uh, the way they are. We are already discussed that in our potential form videos. So anything, just copy and paste. All right, then we can start running applications. So the first application that's run is block mesh, which is pretty familiar. No need any introduction there. You should be quite familiar with this by now. Uh, next thing will be this thing called get application. So in this case, it is the solid displacement form. Uh, you can just as well, re you can replace this purple line with a solid displacement form and you'll pretty much get the same thing. Okay, and where does this get from? Where does it get the application from? It gets it from the control date. Uh, you can change it there or you can change it here. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so next next thing is uh, run application. Then you have this S thingy. Then it says sigma, then it says post process, and then it says function components sigma. Okay, so what is this talking about? Uh, it, it's not uh, something we are very familiar with, perhaps at this point. I wouldn't expect you to be that familiar. 
but that's okay. We're gonna go through this in this video. And then we're also having this uh, run application, single graph post process function single graph. All right, so uh, how, how are we going to uh, find out how to type this out normally? I mean, uh, normally in your command line, you just run block mesh and then you run icofoam or piece of foam and then the thing will start running or snappy hex mesh or whatever. Then you, you know, the way you type it here is slightly different. But with this, these two lines of code, uh, you don't really know what's going on. So where do you find how to execute the file? So, um, yeah, I'm on caps lock. All right, let's go to this uh, log block mesh. All right, so you notice the first few lines. It says build open form ya yeah, in uh, whatever it is. Look at this line called execution. Execution will tell you what uh, program this is running. So the code that you use to execute this is block mesh. So that's very simple. So if you look at the other log files, so look at solid displacement foam, for example, and then you'll see that the execution line is called solid displacement foam. So if you were to go to icofoam, you would see a similar thing in this execution line. Just pay attention on there. Okay, and so let's take a look at this sigma in the post-processing uh, part. So take a look. It says the execution line is post-process function component sigma. And if you look over here, it is very similar to this, right? So uh, except over here, you probably have to put this uh, parentheses or apostrophes or, or whatever you call them um, so that uh, the uh, open form will recognize this as you know a string because the brackets can really confuse uh, uh, yeah parentheses or brackets can really confuse the, the reading of code so putting these in is very important so but what the what the code reads it as is as it just says post process pro post process function component Sigma now what is this doing um, well, don't don't really don't worry about getting into that yet. But um, we we can explain a little more in uh, next time. So, but uh, the bottom line is that if you want to see what code is being run, you just go to the execution line and then you read it out. So uh, you can also look at the other log. So there's this is post process and okay post. Oh, vi log post process and you go for single graph okay so what is this this is execution function single graph so you see this uh, post process function single graph all right so we can try and run that on open form now function single graph so you see it's uh it's finished running okay so it's uh going to run all these things out and then we will look at the post processing file and we see all these things in all these results put into single graph and then we'll have this here so this will be the output of uh whatever you are you are putting in so uh let's say okay we start with the simple bits uh let's say you already plotted out all your data you you wrote your 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 files for this post processing how are we going to get the results out okay so we, we start with results extraction this is pretty easy then we can go in depth into looking at the rest of how to write this code okay so because the most important is after you you put all this out what are you going to do right okay so let's go and read all right, so it will output this thing called line sigma xx dot xy. If we vi this file, line sigma xx dot xy. Oopsie, I should not have put that underscore. Vi line, okay. So what you see is these two columns of uh, what these two columns of code. All right. So uh, yeah. This, this is perfect for you know plotting in Excel, plotting in Google Sheets, or whatever data processing software you have. So, um, 
how we going to do this. Okay, so let's say let's say we want to copy it to the desktop, right? So what are we going to do? Uh, we can. There are two ways we can do uh, uh, do this. We can either navigate to desktop using this uh, open form command line interface, or of course we can uh, you know you do some shortcut. So let's do a CPAR. Uh, I put dot. I want to copy this entire thing into the uh, home directory I have. So, uh, so it's this squiggly line with a forward slash. Okay, so I'm going to press CD and that will take us to, right to the home directory and that will be our single graph folder. So once the single graph folder is out, we can actually use Windows to navigate there. I have this shortcut folder that conveniently navigates to the home directory. I can just uh, copy and paste over this single graph to the desktop and yeah, that's the way I like to do things. You should know where is it by now. It should be in your root fs folder and if you're not sure, you, you can look at my earlier videos, especially those introductory videos where I show you how to navigate to here. But I assume you guys are already intermediate uh, open form people, so you should be able to know how to do this already. Okay, so now this thing is on the desktop. What are you going to do with it? Uh, so we have the 20, 40, 60, 80, right? So we have this line sigma xx. And what you can do is you open up you open it up with Notepad if you are using Windows. So Notepad is a very convenient thing. And you just double click. All right. So now now these are in two lines, right? So no problem. However, you still want it in Excel. So what do you do? Control All. We copy, we paste, and we just look for some Excel document, uh, and we paste it here. So this is something uh, I've tried already. So we can just delete this and we just paste it here so simply copying and pasting from notepad will already uh, put put all these into two nice columns for us which is pretty convenient if you think about it so um, all we have to do now all we have to do now is uh, plot this out using a scatter plot and there you go you have this nice curvy line which is very similar to what we have here okay so uh, this is the plot that we receive. Uh, of course, now we, we have multiple series. Uh, we can actually, uh, we can actually, uh, yeah, overlay, overlay, you know, this, this, uh, these plots over time or over a few, you know, yeah, a few uh, comparisons. For example, you want a laminar velocity profile, turbulent velocity profile of uh, the average velocity. We can overlay the graph. You can see how it's done now. At least it is shown possible inside one of those open form uh, directories. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this single graph folder because I don't need it anymore. And just be careful when you delete them. Eh? So I'm going to cd change directory to this file again. All right. Okay, so copy. Oopsie. Never mind. I'll delete that, cd and right click and that will bring us back here into the post-processing folder. Now, uh, of course, we want to learn how to write our own post-processing uh, uh, files. So we'll continue the analysis of how it's being written. Then we can talk about um, all this in the next video. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something on you know, where to find all this post-processing uh, information how to plot graphs uh, we'll continue more our discussion in the next video uh, if you found this useful please hit the like and subscribe i appreciate that very much thank you i'll see you next time bye bye